So, good morning, good evening, good day, good now, good night, if you're listening to this in the middle of the night. So these sessions are really opportunities to simply be. And if you found your way to these sessions, it might be that you have previously have experienced some suffering, some pain and maybe there's a desire in you for more ease. More harmony, unity, peace and ultimately fulfillment. And oftentimes we find that moments of suffering or pain are somehow keeping us away from this, what we want, this peace, this happiness. And sometimes it can feel never ending, whatever emotional vortex of energy we are caught in. It can feel very overwhelming. And the way that I navigate this is by seeing whatever is here, not as in the way, but as the way, as a gateway, a portal for presence. Something that's calling out for love. because it has forgotten that it already is love. That it already is that which it seeks. And the human mind, the finite consciousness, is very good at forgetting. It 
me forget the oneness of being. We very easily get pulled into the burdens, the wounds of our parts. We get caught in projections, blame, It all seems very very real in that moment in time. Almost hijacks. In fact, it does hijack our ability to be in presence. Just in this moment, the invitation is to attune to presence, to recognize that presence is here. If you get a bit stuck with this presence, sometimes just focusing on the breath can lead us into that effortless presence. Sometimes we can imagine a small sort of a pinprick of light within, often somewhere close to the heart. And imagine and feel that light expanding and growing and filling our whole being with presence. Sometimes we can attune to presence through 
noticing the contrast or the opposite feeling. In one of his yoga sutras, Patanjali speaks about riding the opposite to unconditioned presence. So if in this moment there's a, a feeling, a thought, maybe a sensation in your body that feels contracted, tense, see if you can focus on an area of your body that feels relaxed, spacious, maybe somewhere in your feet. And allow that to spread through your body. And sometimes just a simple self inquiry. Something like, who am I? Or to whom does this thought occur? Who is aware? Or what is aware right now? And immediately for me, when I simply ask that question, there's a total merging. There's a total surrendering, dissolving of anything here that feels separate from presence, fulfillment, peace. There's at least four different ways of coming into presence. If it doesn't instantly happen for you, these are little practices, little tools. We can use the breath, we can use visualization, we can use the opposite sensations in the body and we can use self inquiry and you might have your own ways of coming into presence And presence is simply another word for consciousness or awareness, being. And moments of suffering, moments of reliving trauma can really take us out of presence. Bessel van der Kolk, one of the more well-known trauma experts, says that the hallmark of trauma is our inability to be in the present. This is how important presence is.
and presence is one of the key qualities of self in the IFS model too. And presence doesn't only happen when you're on your meditation cushion or when you're in a spiritual group meeting. Presence can happen when you're in the middle of a busy airport. Presence can happen when you're doing the school run. We can even be present in the middle of a war zone. So presence isn't some kind of an exclusive thing that is only available to yogis or people who meditate for 20 years. Or... Presence is here and now and it's available to all in any mo moment. And presence doesn't reject life. You don't have to go and live on your own on a mountaintop in order to be present and peaceful and fulfilled. Presence doesn't dem demand a quiet mind.
presence is simply present to whatever is, whatever unfolds within the presence or as the presence. And usually when we attune to this primal presence, typically we do notice that the mind goes quieter, the body softens, the muscles of the body relax. But that's not why we attune to presence. It's not something that we need to strive for or achieve. Presence isn't something we build. Like we build muscles in the gym. Presence simply is And many of us who come to these practices are indeed seeking relief from our suffering and from our pain. And so we may initially come to want presence as a way of feeling happier and more peaceful. But in the end, we rec recognize that we already have that. There's nothing really here to build or to work on. It's, it's here. So this is a, really a process of undoing rather than doing. Unlearning rather than learning. You don't have to lift a single weight. You don't have to walk on your knees for a thousand miles in order to be present. You simply let your animal body do what it wants to do as it is. And it's such an opposite way of how our culture has ingrained in us that in order to be good enough, to be happy, to achieve things, we need to work hard. You know, there's that phrase, no pain, no gain.
very built upon shame. I'm not good enough now, I'm not worthy, and so I need to try harder. When has trying harder really worked for us? Are we not perpetually stuck on a mill of trying hard? Attempting to be better? When does this race come to an end? Is there a time when we are good enough? When we are worthy enough? I recognize that this paradigm of doing is predicated on shame. Yeah. Non-dual IFS and similar ways, similar practices are really pred predicated or built upon unshaming and undoing. We already are that presence, that peace. And although presence is our nature, paradoxically, it doesn't come naturally to us. We've somehow built defense walls against presence. And to some extent, this tactic has kept us safe. It's got us through some of the hardest, most challenging, most traumatic moments of our life. But unlike animals in the wild who can shake off the stress hormones, the fight or flight response, we seem to get very stuck, very frozen in our protective walls, the armor that we put on.
And there is a kind of intelligence and wisdom in pro protecting ourselves. There is. But in the end, the armour that we put on to keep ourselves safe starts to weigh too heavy. It burdens us. It traps us. keeps our vision narrow and above all keeps us stuck in the suffering and the pain. How would it be to let this armour loosen a little bit now? Through the breath Letting the breath lubricate, soften. Expand contraction. And eventually we find that we can even let go of any sense of the breath as we're just with presence. And then what I find is that when I come to this presence, I cannot find the I that is breathing. I am being breathed. Or simply breathing is occurring. So initially there may need to be a sense of an aspect of us that utilizes the breath to come back to presence. But in the end, even that falls off. Even any sense of doership falls away. Because you can't do presence. You can simply be presence.
I mean, what happens for me when when I'm bare, when I'm open, when I'm nothing. I find that I lose any des desire to talk. <laughs> Quite easily. Sit in total silence, total peace for hours on end. So all we need to do is remove the barriers to presence. Take off the armor, lay it down. For consciousness, it's nothing. Consciousness take care of it. For consciousness, it's light. For us it's heavy, or it feels heavy, but in presence it has no weight at all. When I was much younger, I found this simple presence absolutely impossible. I did everything to escape presence. And a lot of people
can get into this habit of continually putting up barriers to presence. And we know the classic ways we can do that. Social media. Is one. It's probably the most common one nowadays. Or perpetual doing. Tasks, never ending tasks, never really sitting down. For me, to be present would have been the most painful thing in the world to sit down and to be with me with myself with this in this beingness would have been unthinkable and yet now I recognize it as my nature as who I am it's a joy it's a restful joy to be to rest in presence. I feel like now even Blinking, even talking, thinking, attempting to be present is too much of an effort. I'm too lazy for that. I simply am. me think of that Lao Tzu quote which I'm paraphrasing here and be like that supremely lazy man for whom even blinking feels like too much effort Oh yes, initially initially it does feel like some effort is needed either focusing on the breath, visualization, riding the opposite waves and self-inquiry. Initially, there is some effort to begin the process of stripping away the barriers we build against presence, against peace, against our natural beingness. But in the end, we simply flow, float,
And you see in our culture, laziness is seen as something negative. Resting is seen as unproductive. But what, what are we trying to produce? What are we trying to manufacture? And how is the productivity continuing to keep you away from your natural presence? Oh, as we come to the end of this meditation, notice how your body is feeling. Maybe you can acknowledge and thank yourself for giving yourself this hour to be in presence. And take a moment to reorient yourself back in the surroundings, come back and know that you can always take this presence everywhere. It's always here. It's available for you at all times. Hmm. Thank you for joining me.